What is up everybody? James Jackson here, back again with another video. If you're new to my channel, I do tips and tricks for the filmmaking industry. So if you like the content here, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the content going forth. Well, the updates and news keeps on coming today. I just uploaded my video on the new announcement for the future of SD cards, but now we got a post-production uh, announcement specifically that I know everybody who, well, a lot of people has been excited to hear about. And that is the fact that ProRes RAW is now natively supportive in Premiere Pro CC in their latest update. There's been a lot of other updates to Premiere Pro that I know people are excited about, specifically the hardware accelerator update. Super excited about that. Personally, I um, it's not that much affected to me since I haven't been uh, on a Premiere Pro for over a year. I've left Premiere Pro for a while. I've gone fully into DaVinci Resolve, but I know a lot of you guys still use Premiere Pro, so this is a huge update. But today we're focusing mainly on the ProRes RAW update. And uh, says it's kind of interesting. It will be it's interesting to say the least because yes, this is a big deal, and that ProRes RAW is now natively supportive. But when you go into Premiere Pro after you do in, do the install and and put the updates in, you will notice the um, there's some things that are still seems to be limited in terms of ProRes RAW. Uh, in terms of what you could do in terms of the raw features of it. The main difference being the fact that the only metadata non-destructive thing you can change in Premiere Pro right now is exposure. So you can adjust the exposure up and down and it's non-destructive. That's pretty much it. That's the only thing that you can do right now. So why did I make a video about this? Because I, I guess I wanted to discuss, because I know a lot of people are excited because a lot of cameras are going into ProRes RAW, and there is some interest to, uh, there is some really positive things to look at it. For one, even in its current shape, you're looking at a 12-bit file, either 12-bit and in case of some of the Sony, uh, Sony cameras, 16-bit, but most cameras, it's going to be a 12-bit file that, uh, with a uh, 444 color space, Essentially, it's better. It's a basically a ProRes XQ that is in a much more compressed and easy, more manageable file. At the worst case scenario of how you can look at ProRes RAW in its current state. So, for a lot of people, that may be beneficial, especially for some people that may work in visual effects that needs that that color space and needs that twelve bit bit depth. These, this is going to be offering, uh, be able to offer from cameras like the Panasonic S1H, the uh, Nikon Z6, the Canon C300 Mark II, the C500 Mark I, the Sony cameras, the, the list goes on and on in the list of cameras. And now, and of course, there's two native cameras that actually can record ProRes RAW natively. And that it, the first one was the camera from the Inspire drone. But the second one has been recently announced, and that is, of course, the uh, Mavo Edge, the 8K camera coming from Confinity, which will deliver 8K RAW video in ProRes, via ProRes RAW. So the question I guess I, we need to start asking ourselves is, is there enough of a benefit from ProRes RAW besides that compression to warrant at least the investment into ProRes RAW. And obviously now it's going to Avid. I mean, sorry, it is coming to Avid. We know it's now uh, natively supported in Premiere. And then, of course, you got Final Cut. But still no signs of it in DaVinci Resolve. And to be quite frank with you, I don't expect it to be in DaVinci Resolve anytime soon. Because I, I, I mean, in my conspiracy theory, I think Blackmagic Design and... Apple are sort of competing right now f for the favor of the king, that being Ari. And once Ari lays a decision on whose raw codec they may end up deciding to support, then the other cam, then well, I don't want to say the loser, but the one, but the other uh, platform will then eventually support that one. That is my theory, of course. 
And to me, it's sort of like that's, I think people, because I know a lot of people are excited. I know Trevor is super excited about uh, my, my uh, YouTube community friend, Trevor. He's super excited about ProRes Raw for his S1H, which is supposed to be, if it's not already in the S1H right now, it will be before the month's end. So lots of lots of excitement around it. But to which I go is is the benefit of that of that extra color space worth it in this current iteration where you really can't affect the raw codec compared to something say like Blackmagic Raw, which does still offer that 12-bit color space, but you get way more control and you get what is many people would consider the raw, the main point of raw, which is control of the white balance, the tint, and the ISO. Blackmagic Raw allows you support, allows you control over all of those. Whereas ProRes RAW does not. Only the only thing you can attempt uh, to change is exposure. And that is the same even in Final Cut. Really, everything else that you can change, the saturation, all these changes to saturations and everything, that really all you're doing is applying um baked in information. So there really isn't that much difference between 12 uh ProRes XQ in ProRes RAW. So to my, at least in this point in the time, I think it's something that you could definitely, it should be something you should keep an eye on, but you definitely, I don't see this as, at, at right now, as a big investment just yet. From my eyes, pers uh, personally, I think Blackmagic RAW has a little bit more control, but, even, but understand Blackmagic RAW is still limited on its own. It does not offer nearly as much flexibility as Red Core Raw or even Canon Cinema Raw Light. It offers way more flexibility than Blackmagic Raw. Now, uh, with B Cinema Raw Light, it's definitely larger and more um, meteor files compared to Blackmagic Raw. But you do have more control over the image should you need to make adjustments, which to me is as someone who, gener who makes their own LUTs. By the way, I got my own little LUT store. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can pick up LUTs for both the Blackmagic Pocket cameras as well as Canon C200. Check that out. But I think, Pro we need to, I think it's still sort of a wait and see with ProRes RAW because if Blackmagic somehow does make this, you know, underdog victory and gets Ari to support their pro their raw codec before pro is raw that's a huge game shifting change because then all of a sudden guarantee you every other camera maker will follow suit and try to talk to black magic into getting their raw format uh to be supported so we shall see but let me know what you guys think and also, I will leave a link uh, for you guys to sort of see for yourself where, what it is comes with Blackmagic Raw. But let me know what you guys think. Leave a like, leave a comment below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys' thoughts on the new adding of ProRes Raw to Premiere Pro. And until next time, take care, everyone.